Russia is the largest nation on Earth, physically. It's ginormous. It covers an area equal to basically one-eighth the size of all the inhabited land on Earth. We think of China as huge, but Russia is significantly bigger. We're pretty big, too. We've got outlying areas in Hawaii and Alaska that give us a big geographical reach across a big spread of the globe. But you know what? Russia's got 11 time zones contiguously across the belly of their huge country. Still, though, as big as Russia is, in 1971, Russia decided that in one really specific way, they were not big enough. Because even though their huge size means their own military bases just inside Russia span a huge portion of the globe and a bunch of the most important waterways on Earth, in 1971, 44 years ago, Russia decided that what they really needed was a naval base, a military port on the Mediterranean. So... Outside of Russia. Yeah, on the Mediterranean, way over there. Helpful for even more geographic reach for that giant country. Also helpful to have a nice warm weather port when a lot of your other big ports are pretty freaking icy in the winter. And so in 1971, Russia entered into a long-term lease deal with the nation of Syria for Russia to operate a big old Russian Navy base inside Syria. It's Russia's only big military port outside of Russia itself. They took it over in 1971. They operated it for 20 years until the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. They have operated it for the next 24 years since then. It's really important. It's a really important lily pad for them. Tartus, this base in Syria, it's Russia's outpost on the Mediterranean. It's their outpost in the world. That's how they are in Syria. It's very important to them. They've been there for more than a generation now. Really, it's very important to them. They have been there for more than a generation now. I swear. Governor Christie, I swear. Governor Christie. Well, I'll, well, if I'll tell you what reckless is. What reckless is is calling Assad a reformer. <laughs> What reckless is, is allowing Russia to come into Crimea and Ukraine. What reckless is, is inviting Russia into Syria. Gosh darn you, Barack Obama, for traveling back in time and inviting Russia into Syria when you were 10 years old in 1971. That was so reckless. What reckless is, is inviting Russia into Syria. To be clear, Russia already in Syria. But it was that kind of night. One of the things I would immediately do, in addition to defeating them here at home, is bring back the warrior class, Petraeus, McChrystal, Mattis, Keene, Flynn. Every single one of these generals I know, every one was retired early because they told President Obama things that he didn't want to hear. Carly Fiorina last night saying that General David Petraeus was retired early for telling President Obama things he didn't want to hear. General Petraeus actually left the Army in order to become head of the CIA under President Obama, and then he left that job because he had an extramarital affair and gave classified information to his mistress for which he was found guilty of a crime. Maybe she meant a different General Petraeus. As for General McChrystal, he left the service after an unflattering portrayal of him and his top staffers was written up by the late reporter Michael Hastings and then published in Rolling Stone. It's possible, though, that Carly Fiorina meant an entirely different General McChrystal who nobody's ever heard of. I'm quite sure, though, that she knew who she was talking about when she mentioned General Jack Keane. And I know that's who she was talking about because he's on Fox News all the time. So I know that's who she was thinking of. Um, he, too, she said, uh, was retired early after giving President Obama advice that the president didn't want to hear. Let's let Fox take it from here. This is freaking amazing. One of the things I would immediately do, in addition to defeating them here at home, is bring back the warrior class, Petraeus, McChrystal, Mattis, Keene, Flynn. Every single one of these generals I know, every one was retired early because they told President Obama things that he didn't want to hear. You heard it. Carla Fiorina last night mentioned General Jack Keane by name. And guess who is here? General Jack Keane, alive and alert and with us this morning. Did you, in fact, General, give advice to President Obama which he didn't want to hear and didn't take? No, I've never spoken to the President. That's not accurate. Hmm. And, um, and I, I never served this administration. I served the previous administration. General Jack Keane retired in 2003 when Barack Obama was a member of the Illinois State Senate. 
But somehow, surely, he exerted his evil Obama influence from the Illinois State House to take down good General Jack Keene because of his advice that made the state senator so uncomfortable. And now Carly Fiorina will restore the general to his rightful billet. Honestly, though, it was, it was that kind of night. I will tell you this, when I stand across from King Hussein of Jordan, I say to him, you have a friend again, sir, who will stand with you to fight this fight. He'll change his mind. You see the serious thing at the end? He's like, nailed it. Yeah. Got the name in there. Chris Christie really going for it there, saying he will give King Hussein of Jordan what for? This is footage of the funeral of King Hussein of Jordan from when he died in 1999. He's been dead for 16 years. And his son, the King of Jordan, since then, King Abdullah, he's not exactly like an obscure, low-profile guy. If American political leaders know the name of one king in the Middle East, it's probably King Abdullah. But not last night. Not with these guys. Mr. Trump. Dr. Carson just referenced the single most important job of the president, the command, the control, and the care of our nuclear forces. And he mentioned the triad. The B-52s are older than I am. The missiles are old. The submarines are aging out. It's an executive order. It's a commander-in-chief decision. What's your priority among our nuclear triad? Well, first of all, I think we need somebody absolutely that we can trust, who is totally responsible, who really knows what he or she is doing. That is so powerful and so important. The right three now. legs of the triad, though, do you have a priority? Because I want to go to Senator Rubio well, I, after I think, that. I think him. to me, nuclear is just the, the power, the devastation is very important to me. It's that kind of night. The devastation is very important to me. Just the power, devastation. That's what really counts, right? It has been a really interesting question in American politics as to what would happen in the Republican Party on national security and foreign policy after the catastrophe of the last Republican administration, the Bush-Cheney administration. We really need two parties who are good at this issue in order to have good policy on this issue. We need good debate because this stuff is hard and our best decisions will come out of good, robust debate. Can the Republican Party hold up its end of the debate? What would the Republican Party become on national security after the disaster of Bush and Cheney? Huge question, huge, important question. Please, God, let this not be their final answer. I I think think to me, nuclear is just the, the power, the devastation is very important to me.